This is the Jabberjaw Podcast Network. Visit JabberjawMedia.com for more shows like this one. Here it is. We're on. Join us here each week, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, right here on Adobe Radio. Welcome to the Mike Herrera Hour. Hey, hey, hey. We got a great episode for you. I know that episode is before us in the future, but it is good. It is good. Mill and Colin, MXPX. What I mean by MXPX is I actually get Tom and Yuri to sit down, in hang a out. Dimly lit room. Dimly lit room. With great conversation. It maybe was fun. a glass of wine, maybe not. See, it was before the show, so we weren't <laughs> <laughs> we weren't uh, relaxing too much. But, not yet. Uh, I want to welcome Jake. Jake Grabbrot. Hello. Thanks for being on. He uh, he was with us in uh, Hollywood, taking photos, documenting sat in on on uh the segment with tom and yuri so uh, i thought i'd just have you back and recap a little bit mill and colin man awesome to have them we were uh, playing with them in seattle a couple weeks ago sold out i know i have to mention that every time don't do you have to mention sold out every time if it's sold out i think you still have <laughs> you you have the right to say that <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm very uh self-conscious about things lately um anyway awesome to have nicola matthias eric frederick those dudes are rad very swedish make no mistake they're very swedish and they uh they put on a great show so i about i don't know about an hour before they went on stage i i ran onto their bus and just got all their input on beer mostly beer we talk about beer and um and then they hit the stage and did it up. Actually, I technically hit the stage right after that interview. I was going to say, I think you might have even hit the stage a minute or two late because you were so frantically going from podcast to stage. Yeah, I was drinking beer with Mill and Colin. So what are you going to do? Some Thank things you. can't be can't be rushed. <laughs> so that we have a theme going on tonight. Drinking beer with Mill and Colin. Wine with MXPX. Is, is it? <laughs> what's the? <laughs> we're eating cookies currently. So there's nothing too crazy going on right now. Yeah, but Milano cookies. It's Milano fancy. Cookies. Milano. True. Pepperidge Farm. There you go. <laughs> um, we do have a sponsor, not M- Milano cookies, though. It's uh, Blue Apron. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, hey, so what did you feel? Hollywood was awesome. It I had was. a great time. Um, I mean, to have that progression over the course of three shows and and to see you know some of the same people in the crowd every single night but new people coming every single night like you know a, a room like that it was such a great room to be in for that for that kind of atmosphere yeah and we recorded that segment with tom and yuri um on night two so that was friday night so it was right in the middle um we had we had done night one felt really good about it talked about how that went we talked a lot about um, the pre-production, the rehearsals going into, or or even lack thereof, uh, <laughs> going into some of these shows, and and how it just kind of sometimes it's like everything takes the time it takes, and that's how much time you need. And uh, it was really fun to talk to those guys. It always is. Um, I have fun playing with them, talking, anything. Um, we we've been around each other long enough to to be able to just kind of sit around and do nothing. Or sit around and just have great conversations. Yuri, you know, is always on point with that. So we have a sponsor. Um, it's Blue Apron, and I'm seriously so stoked to be to be uh, sponsored by them because I've been using Blue Apron for a long time. Uh, my family has been doing meals. We get them delivered. Uh, my wife's cooking the stuff. I gotta admit, it's not me. It's my wife. She's cooking all of the meals. And I help out with the, you know taking care of the kid or something. You know? but I help out with the eating it. Is what I, Mike really means. I eat it. I eat the, <laughs> Yeah, I eat it a lot. So blue. What is Blue Apron though? Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals. So that's very true, in my opinion, in my experience. So they set the highest quality standards for their community of artisanal. Art, that's a very nice word. Suppliers, artisanal suppliers, family, family run farms, fisheries, ranchers. So whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild caught Alaskan salmon or heirloom tomatoes, Blue Apron is bringing you the best. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre 
portioned ingredients to make delicious home cooked meals. Seriously, it's so rad. Like you don't have to go searching for all of the different ingredients at and, and even if you can get this stuff at your local store, a lot of times it's going to be uh, a really big company prepackaged food. Um, I just don't like it, man. The ingredients make such a huge difference to me that I actually feel much better when I'm eating healthier, locally grown, or or at least sourced uh, foods, not just the prepackaged big box stuff. I think we're really moving into into people caring a lot more about what they put into their bodies. Like we're past the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s. Thought, okay, are we getting it yet? All right, finally, we're ready. Let's eat healthy. But um, so Blue Apron is, is rad. So they have a variety of new recipes created each week by Blue Apron's culinary team and are not repeated within a year. It's always different stuff. It's always really well done. It's flexible. You can customize your rep recipes each week based on your preferences. I think I talked about that earlier. Choose delivery options to fit your needs. There's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. You're going out of town. You're busy, busy, can't cook. No problem. Turn it off. Uh, we do it all the time. We just pick and choose. So it's super easy. Each meal comes with a step-by-step, -step, easy to follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients and can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. Wow. So you actually have to do it, but it's all there for you. So if you're not a moron, you can make it happen. <laughs> Which does cut out some people. It cuts out a few people. It cuts out me, to be honest. <laughs> like, <laughs> But uh, so anyway... You guys, please. So check out this week's menu and get your three free meals. Like you get three of them for free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash Mike H. It's always Mike H. So blueapron.com slash Mike H. You're going to love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash Mike H. Wow. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. I'm sold because I've been using it for years and I love it. Check it out, guys. That's the kind of products I want to endorse on my show and uh, I'm happy to do it. So thank you guys. And if you're interested in anything I sponsor, know that I believe in it. Okay? All right. That's what the new deal is from here on out. I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, involved in how I pick sponsors because this is my show. All right. Mm. So we got Mel and Colin coming up first. Um, it's a shorter interview than the MXPX one. So we'll, we'll do MXPX last, but thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, go to mikeherrera.net for show notes, photos. It's going to be good. And, uh, that's all I want to say. Let's just move on. Mill and Colin guys, Mill and Colin, get with it. True Brew is a great album. If you haven't checked out their latest one, I just, I highly recommend. All right. Without further ado and Jake. Thanks for being here. Of course, always. All right, here we go. All right, Mill and Colin is in the house, is in Seattle. We got Nick, Matias, we got Frederick, and of course, Eric. What's up? Uh, sorry, Eric. Sorry. I'm, nobody can see which way I'm looking. It's on radio. <laughs> That's right. But uh, thank you guys for taking the time to, one, do a show with us. Awesome to have you guys out here in Seattle. You guys are on tour. I kind of had kind of had an epiphany and I was like man I you know we saw each other like a while back and I was just like we can make this happen you know if you're if you guys are on tour yeah. we, could, we could really do this you know and and here we are so uh excited excited to be here tell everybody a little bit about the U.S. what's what's the worst thing about the United States right now on tour, what do you think? Uh, on tour, uh, I think that tr the Trump issue is the worst thing about uh, yeah. about the U.S. these days. But hey, yeah. th thanks a lot for this this show. It's gonna be great. We're yeah. super stoked to go here. Absolutely, thank you. Everybody's like Trump. Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> fed up with it. I guess. No, yeah. man. I mean, that's the thing. Is like, if if that's the worst thing, I want to hear it. You know, because from an outside perspective, uh, it's good for people in the U.S. to know that one, you're being laughed at. Two, are you serious? Like you're gonna nominate Trump, Hillary? Like what? What's the deal? You know, like yeah. American politics is is really a laughing stock lately. Yeah, and I mean the U.S. is so influential on the whole world, and that guy doesn't seem to have any foreign politics as all at all. You know, 
I mean, yeah, but, but it felt like a joke that grew into uh, something real. And that, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. weird thing about it, you know? Completely surrealistic. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, but it hasn't ended yet, right? The so joke is not over, right? No, no, no so... Uh, it's like a performance art thing, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's just like this, we're going really deep. Andy Kaufman, you know, like, yeah, let's yeah, read, exactly, exactly. read Shakespeare. So he's, he's all gone. It's yeah, just yeah, like, like, did that really happen? So yeah, but it, sometimes, you know, people like that can sort of work as a sort of a... Alarm clock. No, maybe it is Andy Kaufman. He just pulled the fucking yeah, yeah, mask yeah, off and he's been hiding, yeah. you know, ever since. Might be like As that. Trump. Yes, uh, yes, I think that might right. be. That's why yeah. he wears the wig. Yeah, yeah exactly. right. <laughs> it's not I, a wig. I mean, to me, it's like it could work as a sort of a, a wake up call, you know, because people are like, what's going on? Is it, is it for real? And so there's definitely yeah. something to say about the fact that. Trump is anti-establishment. Hillary Clinton is very pro-establishment. She's yeah. part of like the status quo, if you will. And vote for her if you don't want anything to change, which all the rich people, all the people in power, of course, don't ever want anything to change. Yeah. And that's the problem is you have somebody like Trump that's, that's supposedly telling the truth. I'm doing air quotes, people. Yeah. Telling the truth, but with sounding like he's telling the truth without, without actually using facts. So he's just like literally sounding as if he's telling the truth, yeah, but yeah. not really. And I mean, that reflects on like on modern times too with social media and everything. There's no background check. You know, people just take, uh, you know, facts for granted, which they read in their Facebook feed or whatever. Yeah. It's so scary. I mean, and he's, uh, he, I think he's like pinpointing that scary thing, actually. I yeah. agree. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's the, the power of persuasion is is a huge part of what he's using to get people to vote for him to get people to to you know regurgitate his his talking points and stuff like that but um it's it's almost not it's not enough just to like talk about oh trump's bad because there's so many people that are on the other side yeah. or whatever side this is i don't i don't know what side we're talking about but it seems to go beyond left and right at this no, point. Exactly, it's the same in Sweden with the racial, you know, right-wing problems we got in politics too. You can't. I mean, I, I don't know how to reach them because if you're like telling them that they are stupid, you just put more, you know, gas on the flame. You know, they they just they grow. By yeah, but that. I mean, it's the, like really hard to to. Yeah, but, but the scary thing here is not Trump; it's actually the people who believes in him. Oh, That's of course. the problem. Of course, you know? and, and they exist. You know, so of course the, and there is a bigger problem behind this, you know. And I think, personally, I think the problem is that you have people that are unhappy and exactly. that have problems, you know, yeah. in their lives. That they're, they're, you have a, you know, a system w w where that's all over the world in the Western world, and the Western world is getting bigger and bigger, you know, capitalism and so on. And you you have this, you know, big. Uh, difference between the rich and the poor and that's what's creating uh, uh, people are, are, are yeah, getting poorer and they're not happy there's a big gap in yeah. in the and top that big, and that big people. gap creates you know this sort of need for someone who, who, who's the so-called savior yeah save us save us tell yeah, the yeah, truth yeah kind of yeah. yeah yeah and they would you know I guess people are, are a bit desperate and this guy draws desperate people to him. And yeah, yeah. Well, there's so many issues. I mean, I, I'm not going to go into like all the all the bankruptcies. He's no. filed for bankruptcy. But basically, what he does is go, okay, I'm going to borrow all this money from you to even not even build buildings. Maybe put put my name Trump on a golf course or whatever. And then when it goes under, he just doesn't pay back what he owed. So it'd be like buying a house. And never paying the mortgage on it so he's no. done that like eight nine times yeah. probably more didn't george w bush do the same he was like completely worthless in business as well before he became a politician seems yes like, seems like a republican type of thing they're doing <laughs> and then become president it's crazy it is seriously all about <laughs> perception being reality it is what you can get the masses to sort of like go along with there's a book called 48 laws of power that talks a lot about different ways to to be um influential and in a way where propaganda works all this different stuff i i guarantee trump and people like him 
all they're really good at isn't necessarily the business part, but it's the persuasion, exactly. it's the yeah, yeah, selling yeah. and course, the marketing. Yeah. And yeah. So you've got empty, empty promises everywhere, yeah. but it just sounds really, really good. Yeah. So what are we gonna do about it, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck screw that, screw that for gonna, now. <laughs> let's play punk rock tonight. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. And that's the thing is like we can't solve the world's problems, but we can we can solve our own at least for tonight. Yeah. Right? That's right. Totally. That's totally. Right. I'm with you. Right? Al already solved, man. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So True Brew, I'm sure everybody's been gushing about the new album. You've been drinking a lot of beer. What's your favorite beers you've been drinking on the tour? Uh. I've uh, tried a lot of different beers on the store. Anything standing out? Uh, yeah. There is a uh, bottle logic Wix, uh, two Californian from Anaheim and Riverdale. What's this one? Pale Mosaic also, I'm drinking on right now. It's pretty yeah. good. It's from, uh, where's that from? Austin. Denver, somewhere. Austin, Austin, yeah, Texas. That one's good. Yeah, but I, yeah, but it's a lot of good beer. I mean, yeah, we uh, probably drank too much already. And we, 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 we've been, especially Nicola, like, like we've been actually like headhunting cer certain beers and stuff. But to be honest, I love IPAs. But I had, you know, IPAs every day. So I'm like, my taste buds doesn't work. They don't work anymore. No, no, <laughs> I yeah. just want to love. That's why I have to switch <laughs> to sours, dude. Yeah. <laughs> now it's just like, there can be too much good beer, and then you can't really, you know, tell which one is the true brew. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if IPAs are heavy, so yeah. it, and, and here, you know, this is uh, well, Southern California, and uh, even up here, it, it can be very strong. Like all of a sudden, you're just you can have two of those and have a headache and be puking the next day, right? Not you guys, me. Uh, I'm a lightweight. Not that, like that, but, <laughs> but you just, I mean, you just get so much of it that you can't the next day. No, but you you they, actually, they, they got so much flavor and so much bitterness. It's just like your fucking mouth is just like. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> you look funny. It's good once in a while, well, to actually. I mean, there's so many beers out there. You have, you have sours and, and and different kinds of of other types of beer than just IPAs. So, so. Uh, yeah, but, but ever since we released this album, uh, it's been ridiculous. Like, like with all the touring and like my man here the singer he writes like long lists like for the writer we want this local this local this local we get so much strange beers so it's crazy <laughs> but one, it's fun one, too. one thing is for sure that there's a lot of good beer in, in the u.s yeah, yeah. probably yeah. the best beer in the world and in, in what i like you know so i think that's we got good beer in sweden too but but it's, it's great, to, great beer to, yeah, yeah yeah of course but I, not i have to take the opportunity of course to, uh, to actually mention that that we have a really really good uh, craft beer scene in sweden uh what's one of your go-to's there well because people, like, people will get crazy about beer yeah. about anything but they'll like find it like you're you're doing but they'll order it online yeah, no, well, well, from sweden well yeah. i'm from gothenburg and we have a very good uh, uh craft beer craft beer scene there we got uh, beer Bibliotheque, great uh, brewery, OO, uh, Douglas. Uh, there, there's a, a bunch of them. Also, Swedish Omnipolo, who's making a big name. They're like the Swedish version of uh, Mikeller, doing sort of the gypsy kind of uh, um, brewing. And uh, Swedes make good craft. A and because we're, in a way, just like. And the reason why we're here today is because we were open-minded to American punk rock music back in the days. Yeah. And it's the same way with beers, you know. Uh, uh, all the breweries, well, most of them in Sweden are have the same sort of open-mindedness and sort of inspiration from the States, from beers. Yeah, because you were way Just ahead, like we ahead had of us <laughs> with the craft brewery, brewing stuff. Then. Yeah, but we pick up quickly like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just seems like, like this yeah you guys as a country as a culture really you take something maybe it's pop music maybe it's beer and you really we like you really make it really good and we're, some of the best just, songwriters are from Sweden we're just a bunch of nerds like ni yeah, nine million nerds you know <laughs> it's really you know getting into one thing you really love and you try to you know redo it and you know try but to but I guess Sweden's a very open-minded to other culture and stuff like that. I wouldn't Could, say to other cultures. No, no, no. We're, but, uh, we're, we're yeah. open-minded to specific cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cultures. but it may, it may have been... Which is uh, American culture, yeah, yeah. especially. Yeah. 
I mean, we're not what is it about American culture? Is it just because well, my point is Hollywood? We're a small country, and you know. Yeah. 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 But we're yeah, not. Yeah, no, of course, Hollywood. We, it's yeah, but like, just yeah. We're gonna get to your point now. Okay. Okay. There's a difference between o- open-mindedness to the whole world yeah. and to everything. You, I mean, it's weird. Pick the things he. Yeah, yeah. Looks like it's cool for well, him, you know. And we're not no. open my I mean. No, no. Of, of course, I, I get you. We don't care about the craft beer scene in Afghanistan or whatever. Mongolia, We're, but we are very focused on the craft beer scene in Southern California or, or whatever. But, but how, how's the how's the craft beer scene over there in, in Mongolia? <laughs> in Mongolia. Well, the thing is, if we would be as open-minded as you know some Swedes think that they are. What you do they, is you actually you have to take know, the hops yeah, yourself and put it in a bowl, yeah. and you put the water in a bowl, and then you take the uh, the wheat in the bowl, and then you give it to the guy, and he brews it for you. At the Mongolian place, but yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly right. no, but 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 I mean we're open-minded to this, but it, because like we're interested in this, but I mean like my wife is into yoga and she's open-minded to the stuff happening uh, over there. We're focused. Yeah, we're focused. Yeah. We're focused-minded. I love that <laughs> focused-minded. Everybody, Mill and Colin on the My Career Hour. Thank you guys so much. Um, awesome to get to to do the show and see you guys and hang out. I'll let you go. I know we got to get the show going. Oh yeah. yeah. So we're close. Yeah. We are close. We'll do it. Yeah. All right, you guys. Thanks for being on. Thanks a lot, Cheers. Man. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Make sure you check out Mill and Collins' new album, True Brew. It's out right now. Go check it. <laughs> All right. That was rad. Thank you, Mill and Collins. Love you guys. We're going to do it again at some point. We'll make it happen. So MXPX, um, we kind of we did that Thursday night show with Mill and Collins in Seattle and then the next week Thursday Friday Saturday three nights in Hollywood and like I said before you're catching uh, I'm catching the guys on night two right before we're we're going for for our second the middle years we can call it but before we get into that you know I've been I've been kind of just now that we're done with these shows just moving on doing next projects I'm kicking the mic I'm punching the mic um, and I've been wor- people are constantly asking me about what kinds of shoes I wear, like, where do you get your shoes or where do you get this, that? So I have an affiliate, um, affiliate link for Amazon and I use Amazon prime myself all the time. Family does. And so what I did was I just made links for all the things that I buy a lot. Um, of course it's not a comprehensive list. It's just, it's just a list of what I've bought recently and what I thought could be cool. But I think I'm going to do like each, Every now and then I'll do a new list and I'll just be like list part two and put it up. So if you go to mycarrera.net, go to the extras, you can check out the check out my list of things I buy, like the type of uh, slippers I've been wearing this year. Usually every year I get a new pair of the same slippers. Those. It also sounds like every year you get a new pair of headphones because something happens to the previous one that you had. I lost but my you'll headphones. you have to read about that in this page. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm constantly losing my headphones, constantly breaking them. It doesn't matter what they are. It's just, it's just my nature. I think I'm like a hurric headphone hurricane. Headphones are the new sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> sunglasses. People always want to know where I get those and you can't get them. I literally can't get them. Um, I bought them on the street. I bought a bunch and that's it. So when you find something you love, keep buy a bunch at once. I mean, I, I don't want to encourage hoarding, but Horde. Horde. Okay. Let's get into this interview. All right, Jake. All so right. so you'll hear Jake interject into this now and then as well. I would go right in like this, like really close. Yeah, okay. suck it. Yeah. I can take this whole thing. Eat it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you want to like you want to do the circular motion. <laughs> what, you, what you do here is you got a twist. Yeah, it's like an Indian burn. <laughs> nice. It's good, Ow, damn. It's a good way to put it. Right? It's, it's the right way to do it, eh? <laughs> so here we are. We're smack dab in the middle of MXPX. Three nights in Hollywood. Saturday night is tomorrow. Friday night tonight. Thursday nights in the past. But it was awesome. It was. How great. you guys feeling? Yeah, I you went backwards on the uh, the days there. <laughs> I never know what I'm going to say until it comes out of my mouth. Yeah, and you got to work it out. It's not necessarily true. I mean, that that's. I do know what I'm going to say, but it's not always planned out. Yeah, that's right. But so, you, 
We you got get it done. Yeah, we got Tom. We got Yuri. Yeah. Hi. Should I ask you questions or should we just tell some stories? Yeah, let's tell stories. We just need a topic. Well, let's start with Thursday night, last night, Hollywood, the early years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was kind of fun playing those old songs. I honestly, I honestly had to think more during that show than I have at any show in so long. Like, seriously going, like, okay, hey, what am I doing? What, okay, which, which way does my hand go? What's the next note? Okay, all right, what, what part's next? It was crazy. Yeah. Is that, is that something that is... You see, okay, let me, let me take it back for a second. In my opinion, and I would say Yuri would agree with me, you've always been really good at remembering... And I've been really bad at remembering I, historically. I got, I got it's parts. actually like a family thing. Like uh, my dad and then my grandma, his mom, I uh, just could remember like trivia stuff. Like my dad watches Jeopardy and knows the answer to everything. And I'm like, how do you do this? Like I just remember stuff. And like with me, like I remember like trivia. Like like I could go to a trivia night at a bar and like clean up. Well, my dad and I talk about it. Like if we put our force together, cause he has like all the classic knowledge and stuff. And like I have all like the new stuff. He's like. We got like a full, well-rounded thing. We could we could own people at those things, make some money, <laughs> win some prizes. So yeah, I've always I've always been able to kind of like remember stuff like that, like just trivia and like just recalling things really easy. I wouldn't say like a photographic memory or anything like that, but mine like is still trap. I guess yeah, I don't know. I just I've always had it. So yeah, I, I know what you're saying like it's it is like that with me, and I've I've noticed it with you guys too. So like I have to like tell you no, the song goes like this, and you're like, oh yeah, okay, sorry, it does go like that. You're right. Cool. Yeah. yeah, no, that's definitely been been your MO and uh, it's actually been really cool. Like I was not worried at all about you being in Japan and then coming back and doing these shows. Yeah, honestly, I got back from Japan and uh, you sent me the set list and the night before our first practice, I sat down and just made a playlist on the computer and played through all the songs and I was like there was a couple things where I had to relearn it like ears to hear. I was like what part okay, yeah, after that it it a little a little bit like i said i had to think last night a lot during the show and it was still fun i mean it wasn't like a drag like oh god what am i gonna do i'm gonna mess up but you know i was definitely paying attention to what i was doing a lot more than i normally do because no, normally it's like you know it's, it's stuff we play pretty often and i'm like okay i got this stuff nailed i don't need to really think about it it's more like when i mess up it's because like i'm not paying attention and i might just slide up a half step or something like Whoa, whoops here and go that's me whoops yeah, that definitely happens. What about you, Yuri? Um, yeah, I'm with Tom. It was a, it was a. I think all these nights have those spots in them where it's more thinking. But I honestly had such a blast last night. Just even, even with that, having to think more and stuff. I just, I felt like we connected with the audience. It, it felt so good. Last night was like one of my favorite shows um, that we've done. I think, I think we're on a, we're headed somewhere with how we conduct ourselves and stuff like that. And yeah. It's awesome. I love it. It's so we're, chill. We're going to be conductors soon. Where are we headed here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're on a road to nowhere. No, um, no, I, road to nowhere. yeah, yeah. I, it's just, it's fun. Like I, I'm having more fun because we're just chill and it feels more like these like living room shows or something like that. And, yeah, it's it's just a ton of fun, and maybe it's partly because you have done a lot of that kind of stuff, that more intimate thing, and you've honed your skills at talking with people like that. Oh no, don't don't blame me for this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's actually, I, it's actually I, funny. I noticed like the last couple shows, like you know, last Thursday in Seattle, and then last night, uh, I've been talking more than I have like in years on stage, just like cracking on you, basically, just like oh, there's Mike. Yeah. I'll make fun of him. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, but it's great. It's I think it lend it, it gives people an insight into these people that make music that they like or love or whatever. Um, love, love. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to get you know the crack of like personality in between the songs because the songs are the songs, of course, and everybody ha kind of usually has their own meaning in their own lives for a song or something. Right. But I was surprised last night uh, when we played some of the old stuff like Poconacho, and all, like how many people were singing along and like loud. Like I was like I thought. We'd come out and play the Poconacho block, and it'd kind of be crickets. I thought, like, oh, you know, we'll ease into this set. You know, we'll play yeah. Poconacho first, his first record. And people will be like, yeah, I think I remember that record somewhere. Like, I saw a picture of it online. But people, like, were, like, screaming the words. And I was kind of blown away like that. And, like, teenage politics stuff, too. Just the same thing. I was like, wow, people really dig this old stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, the energy was high, like, right out. First note, boom, it was just there. Yeah, it was awesome. So we got, we did, uh... 
poking at you, teenage politics, yeah. life in general. It was fun it was starting good. with the actual song PXPX too, because it's not something we would ever do. Never. Like if we were going to plan a set, but because it was from that record, it just made sense, and it was a good. It was a good first song. One of the cool things is like now that we know way more songs, we can just throw in this random song, this random song into a, a regular set. Right. I feel like it's just that makes it. I don't know, more fun, more free, more open. Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing that I like like about like Bad Religion. Like they have like a billion records and like, you know, fourteen billion songs. But they always would do like the kind of standard ones. We you know, toured them a lot and had seen them play a million times, but they always throw in some random songs off of some old record that I'm like, Oh wow, I love that song. But you wouldn't think they would ever play it because like, oh that song's super old, you know. But it's not one of the standards, but they just they always mix in some stuff like that and it's awesome and I think you know me as a fan of that band I dig that so I'm sure you know when we do that people are digging on it too I think so yeah for yeah. sure for sure yeah it just it just adds to our you know it was like taking a step back and going okay in January when this was decided before January of course but the shows went on sale in January so it was okay January February March April May June we got five all, not really five months we got four months right four months to get prepared and then you take away all the life stuff all the actual you know other jobs other work other you know Tom's in Japan um, I thought okay for for the amount that we actually worked on the songs like we yeah it came out pretty good because I mean we bands that I talked to like say the Descendants they're a band yeah. that's been around forever they practice they don't practice every day all the time, but like when they're g preparing for a show or a tour, it's they high practice intensity. like high intensity yeah. all day long, that kind of thing. Yeah, we just obviously can't do that. Some people can, some people can't. Right. So I feel like you know we just have to rely on us individually, sort of. Okay, go and learn this. Yeah. Listen to it. Do you guys listen to? You were saying, Tom, you had a playlist. Do you ever listen to the tracks just like as you're going about your day, just to kind of get it in your head? Sometimes, like I'll like, to me, listening to old records is like looking at an old yearbook. You get to see what you look like back in like you know junior high or whatever. But uh, I listen to them occasionally here and there. And then like for these though, I just I made the playlist on the computer and just sat down. And, like I said, ran through them all. When I, it took a while, it was a lot of songs. Uh, but yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't like. I didn't play through it a lot. I did that one time, then just came to practice, and it, it flowed really well the first day of practice. So I was like, well, okay, I guess I don't need to keep like you know beating myself up over it if it's yeah. working you know? <laughs> yeah 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 it's, it's only gonna be so good i mean <laughs> yeah i mean you do the 90 percent of the work and there's always gonna be there's always gonna be a mess up here and there sure. uh, uh a missed note like that happens even with songs that we all know really really well like the back of our hand but i think you know doing the the pre-work on it and actually getting a you know just getting it in your head and getting like the hands moving and figuring out okay i know the parts i know what I'm supposed to do and I just need to go make sure it all works with everyone else. Yeah. Doing that ahead of time helps out a lot. Cause like you said, we only like, we practiced for me like four hours a few times for this and that was it. And, uh, <laughs> like, like that was a long practice for us. I mean, we usually practice for like maybe two hours on a normal like show, but four hours was like marathon practice for us. Really. I mean, back in the old days we used to practice forever when we had nothing else going on, meet up around noon, practice till like five in the afternoon, or whatever like that and write a record or whatever. But uh, like I said, this it was just, it flowed. But I mean, it also, we did practice like for a long time, like in terms of for us, like you, know, you said, compared to the descendants, we're weak, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, overall, I mean, it wasn't a lot of time. You know, we were like once a week for a few months and not, not once a week, you know, we yeah. missed some weeks and just a few hours. I mean, we're probably in like the, I don't know, 50, 60 hours, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Like grand total over the, the five month four months or whatever which did sorry which wasn't that much you know it's it not that much no, not i mean i much. wonder if people not I and mean, people listening i wonder if they think okay 40 50 hours is a lot it does seem like it seems lot, like a lot spread out over months but over months yeah that's what i was gonna ask how many times did you guys practice uh when i was in japan i mean like how far ahead of me three were or you? four three or four at ahead. least right wait Three or four times? Japan, before I got back. You practiced when I wasn't there. Yeah, we started in January in, with the intent of doing once a week. Yeah. And we mostly hit our mark. I think we might have missed two or three weeks. So for like four months. 
I had some show like yeah. I had some times when I would be out of town or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, you guys are hardcore. This is something that like we had to going back to the original sort of intent of this question was this is something we had to like really think about and go. I was like, Yuri, Tom, like this is the idea. Three nights in Hollywood. We can do the three nights in Hollywood and just do sets, but what's gonna set this apart is is actually learning a bunch of songs that we don't know right now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're gonna go yeah. back yeah. and do a lot homework. of people bought the three day pass and they're coming all three days, so it's cool to do it like completely just completely different set. I think we might double up on like maybe one or two songs in the encore, but other than that, completely different set. Yeah, and if Poconacha worked that well, I think the yeah. rest of the nights are going to go perfectly fine. Yeah, I think it's awesome. And we've had, uh, we had Mest on the first night. Um, I'll just go ahead and say because this is going to be in the future. So, <laughs> so, so I can say anything. It doesn't matter. So what we did was we just didn't tell anybody who was opening for these shows. And, and everybody's right. like being driven to madness asking us. <laughs> On every social media platform, who's opening? Who's opening? What's this? That? That's? I get it, and and it's it's kind of cool because you want people to kind of go crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. like causing them anguish, and uh, I don't know. I just kind of like the the idea of just knowing a bunch of stuff and and other people not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in control. Yeah, but, you've but always so we had been messed. Like that. <laughs> we had messed. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't like to talk. Yeah, it's you, you, funny. Keep I'm your, podcast, you keep your cars close to your chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, talking to Yuri, I think I talked to you probably first, uh, and I was just like, "Here's the idea. Let's just pick some songs from each album, yeah, and we're gonna have to learn some, but we'll just break it up, yeah. different night, yeah." And little by little, we started learning them. We chipped I mean, away we really at did. it. I mean, it was one of those things where, when you first initially heard the idea. Or, or presented the idea. It was like, okay, sounds Seems like madness. Very daunting, <laughs> but does. really here we are, and there was we're a few, doing it. There was a few times where I was like, oh man, I don't know if we should do this. Like, right. maybe we should change it. Yeah. But then it came together, and of course, Tom practiced once, and he was perfect. So yeah, <laughs> he was perfect. not perfect. Well, that goes yeah. back to the whole the whole idea of like I said, you know, you can do the work ninety percent. There's still there's still going to be something. I mean, yeah, you can't, I forget lyrics. Right. You can't control often. everything. Yeah, and like, when I was in Japan, you emailed me the set list and uh, I looked at it and I'm like, know it, know it, don't know it, know it, don't. I always meant to listen to them and like put it on my iPod and walk around, but I just never did. <laughs> I, like I said, I just did that one day like, oh crap, we're practicing tomorrow. I better look at, I better listen to this stuff. Well, no matter how you get around it is like that kind of thing. Like, okay, adding, making a playlist that takes time. Yeah. And that, it's kind of work, you know, it's yeah. work, it's time, it's energy, it's all these things. And, and it's not even hard to do, but then you just, all the things that you have to do for whatever project. Yeah. Well, it's like looking at a pile of laundry on your bed and you're like, I do not want to do that, <laughs> but I have to. And five minutes later, you're done. You're like, what was the big deal? <laughs> Why is it making such a big deal? about not want to do this laundry. I'll Re tell you Real why. life scenario. Cause that's the wife's job, right? Bed bugs, bed bugs. <laughs> that was Tom, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, trying to train up my children, but they don't know how to fold. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, no, I, it was it was awesome having Tom come in for that last practice <laughs> after months because it it's technically two practices, two practices, but one was for two the show, practices, uh, the Mill and uh, show. Yeah, one of them was mainly for the Mill and Well, there was actually a third practice where I could only be there for like an hour, and we just like banged through the ones we weren't really sure about. Yeah, it it yeah, it was that final puzzle piece though for sure. We're letting it all out tonight. Everybody knows we barely practiced. That's the thing is like it it honestly is a lot on muscle memory. It is. And and there's a few songs that I'm like, okay, really focused trying to remember, but aside from that like last night I can think of maybe one song where I didn't get the lyrics quite right, but I didn't not sing, so I kept singing it was fine. Like la, 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 la. No, I repeated I like a first kidding. verse or something. But kidding. but that's something that just happened naturally because I just started singing it. And once you're singing it, it's hard to yeah, stop. Yeah, you can't stop. Yeah, it's like some other stuff. I want you guys all to try. Just put on your favorite song <laughs> and try to sing a, your other favorite song while it's on. <laughs> it's hard. I mean, it's mentally. Brain it's like, game. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so I, that, yeah, for me, practicing, like you were saying, do you listen to it and just sort of like osmosis? Mm -hmm. I don't... I. I have a hard time with that. Like I have to sit down, put the headphones on, sit at my quiet drums. 
concentrate and, on it. And actually, yeah, put together the muscle and, and the movements and all that kind of stuff and like l- plot it out, so to speak. Yeah, and that's good too. Yeah. I mean, and I don't do that enough. But. I usually start with listening to the songs and especially if it's yeah. a song. And I've talked about this, I think, before on the podcast with other artists, how they learn stuff, how I learn stuff. But just listening like by osmosis because a lot of times you don't know the song right and if you're learning for another band or something yeah. you know like doing a set like having to learn when i was with playing with travis yeah having to learn those songs in two days like a full set of songs right literally i just started listening to the songs it's like yeah i don't really like this song like we did a few 80s like random songs okay. i didn't know yeah it's not that i didn't like it it was just like i wouldn't normally listen to this but it's oh, work to have to going. listen and learn stuff yeah. you're not that into <laughs> and so to get familiar with the changes that that and then from there i go in and play it yeah and then it's easier it is true i do the very same thing yeah. i do do a few just listen listen and do do yeah uh listen and even draw out like verse one you know writing it out yeah writing too. out to yeah like that for me writing always always kind of cements absolutely the, the, absolutely the uh what happens when there's no more paper idea. and pen in the world? <laughs> right in the dirt. You type it on your phone. Oh, That's yeah. right. That there doesn't. It's totally not the same. <laughs> uh, well, I had Travis Barker on the show a couple weeks ago, and he was talking about how he just prepares yeah. s- just so much for shows. And right. Because he doesn't fly, that also helps because he's on the bus. He goes to New York, and then he gets on the boat. So he's taking a cruise ship over to UK. Yeah, yeah he does That's that awesome. whole deal. I'm jealous. So he literally gets up in the morning and like works out, plays drums all day on the boat. He's an, he's an animal. And he's like he shows up wherever their their you know their first show is, and everybody else is like uh, jet lag and kind of tired, and he's like ready to kill it, you know. Wow. I mean, so you wonder I, why he can kill it. It's like he's yeah. preparing himself in every moment of his life to just smash those drums. Yeah, trust me, I get why he doesn't fly. When I heard about that, I was like. I already hate flying, but if that ever happened, I'm like, I would never fly again. Yeah. And that's, that's awesome that he's able to do that and not fly and like spend all that time. That is cool. You know, cause you got, I don't know how long it takes to go across Atlantic, but it's got to take a minute. I think it's know? two weeks or wow. 10 days. That's crazy. Somewhere in there. Yeah. It's, it's uh, a, definitely a different lifestyle, but I guess he can afford it, you know? So it's, it works, yeah. you know, in that respect. Um, that's something I'd be down to do. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to be... I don't know how many people he has with him. I didn't ask him that question, but it's a real chance to, like, hone in on... Just focus in on everything that's important to you. Yeah, yeah. There's... I always... You know, I talk to a lot of different different drummers, and Travis Barker comes up quite a bit, you know? And I always say, like, there is a reason he is at that level. It's not an accident. The guy is committed to... uh, You know, even when we were touring with Blink-182 back in the... Late 90s. That was his first like, tour. Yeah, he with was. Blink. He was. Excellent. He was no kidding yeah. back then either. The guy was. Yeah. He's obviously super talented, but he also does prepare a lot. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not taking away from his talent, but there's a lot of work that goes A lot into. of work. Yeah. Yeah, talent's real, you know, just part of it for sure. I mean, talented people lose all the time. Talented right. people don't get whatever it is they're after. Yeah. Just because they don't do the work or they're, right. you know. Thomas Edison, right? His yeah. Quote. Tell us about it. <laughs> Tell us about Thomas. Well, he, in- he invented electricity. No. Uh, <laughs> he invented electricity. No, he didn't. He just figured out Discovered how to Discovered it. it. Figured, um, harnessed it. Yeah, harnessed it. No, he said that, like, you know, uh, genius is, like, 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. That's know? right. It's kind of along those lines, you know. Yeah. It takes a lot of work. It does. Of course, Sounds like Nick. We're almost on the episode of Drunk History here. We're right. getting the quote almost right. But, you know. Is that is that correct? Was it almost? Know. Oh yeah, I think it's correct. I don't think people yeah. are tuning into the Mike Herrera Hour for uh, historical like, accuracy. Historical accuracy yeah. and Quotes. facts. Yeah. And, but I mean, then, we're not trying to lie to you, people. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then Nikola Tesla, who worked for Thomas Edison, yeah. um, said that he, if he would, uh, to find a needle in the haystack, he would take each individual piece of hay and put it aside like you go is about everything the hardest possible way of course i think nikola tesla cut his dick off so that he could focus more on- that's Are extreme I'm, uh, I'm that's an extreme makeover I love tesla like he's great and like he's he was super crazy talented and like just he was like the inspiration guy like, he just thought of crazy stuff that like he was trying to do but 
I didn't know he cut his dick off. Yeah, pretty sure like he was self castrated or whatever, just so that he could focus. What on What was the test. method that he used? <laughs> <laughs> no, it had to be like you know really like scientific and exacting because I mean like I don't think he would just chop it off with a kitchen knife. Miniature guillotine. Mm. <laughs> it's, I'm I'm imagining some sort of electronic Maybe device. Like electric. There you go. Like, yeah. Burn it off. Cauterize it. Right Cauterize. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Two electrodes. Yeah. Anyways. Yikes. So, I like his cars. His cars are cool. Yeah. He, yeah. He's a done. Really <laughs> if I could afford a Tesla, I'd drive one. Man, I've been. I've sat in them before, and they're yeah. awesome. They're pretty intense. I've sat in my. Took my first ride in a Tesla last night, and it was like, wow. <laughs> I've sat in one. That's that's as far as it's gone. But yeah, yeah. It's got some get up and go. I'll say that. Maybe maybe Uncle uh, John Feldy will hook me up. He's there got a go. Tesla. There you go. <laughs> you see, I've seen I've seen a few around yeah. here. Like, wow, it's like just a regular average Joe's car, you know, in LA. Oh yeah. You're in Beverly Hills right now, Yuri. So, <laughs> Beverly yeah, Hills. It is an average car. Century City. <laughs> All the people. Nice. Yeah, and you got to really drive like a quarter million dollar Bentley to like nice. stand out or like a McLaren or something like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sorry, I was just trying to quote some circle jerks. Right. Yeah, I got that. I got yeah. that. I had that in my head the last couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird. It's like from from back in the day listening to punk rock, you know, people with money, people in Beverly Hills, people like of higher status were always kind of just, I don't know, it's the, the, the adults. Now that we're adults, like it's kind of changed a little bit. I mean, yeah. we're not on that status necessarily, right. but life is life is strange. Life is funny. It um, is. It is. We we all kind of we all go through the same phases. Yeah. You know. And once we we rebel when we're young we rebel against the old. When we're old we go. What are these? What are these people? kids doing? <laughs> but then you you know yeah. So it's like we just can we live only so long, right? So we don't have a chance to like really learn those lessons or embed those lessons in the next generation. So it's just yeah. history repeating. History is always. It's repeating. life. So we're uh, we're here Saturday night, actually Friday night. Sorry, I'm getting it mixed up. Friday night, about to kick off. Uh, we got True Rivals, Slick Shoes, awesome. We uh, tomorrow night is uh, Too Bad Eugene. It's gonna be awesome. What? Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. You can tell anyone you Sorry, want. Sorry, right Yuri now. literally Listen. just found out. That's crazy. That's oh, crazy. I found out earlier because I, I said, "What's the deal with like it being secret?" And Tony, our tour manager, was like, "Oh, you know, just thought it'd be cool." I'm like. Can I know? I mean, like, are you asking me and I don't know? <laughs> Dude, that's sick. I'm so excited about that. Yeah, it'll be cool. I still, I still listen to their first record, like, often in my car. Like, it comes on and, like, I can't not, I can't change it to something else. I have to listen the whole way through. It's such a good record. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I was stoked that they were they were able to come and do it. And um, original, original guys? Andy? I, I don't know if Andy's going to be there, but no. everybody else, yeah. <laughs> the guitar player. But that's a good question. I don't know. It's close to original. I mean, original. Nobody knows who they are. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> like, know, love you, yeah. dudes. Love you, dudes. I know who you are. Um, for those that don't know who Too Bad Eugene is, they actually were the first band that Rock City Records signed, our, our old record label that we kind of did for a bit. But uh, they came into the clubhouse in Bremerton and recorded, and it's a great record. Great oh, record. So gosh, we're having them back so good. after many, many years uh, to do some some rock and roll. Uh, so scalping, you know, we, we had a big issue with scalpers when the, the shows sold out so quickly. Right. And what happens scalpers. is, yeah, what happens is like you, you, when a show starts doing really well, uh, all these scalp bots sort of like they have these, I don't know, pings that go out to, to, I guess the scalpers. I don't know. I'm not a scalper. I don't know exactly how it works, but I assume they just, oh, this show is really hot. First night sold out. There's two more nights. And so like. The second and third night got sold out really quickly. Okay, but it was only it was probably like eight percent of the tickets were scalped. Okay, so that's not too bad. Out of fifteen hundred tickets, you know, two hundred or something or yeah. less, less yeah. than that. I think we ended up getting a hundred tickets back into the hands of of the fans, and so many people were just like crying and like crying on their emoji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, social media emoji. Absolutely, yeah. But uh. Yeah, it was just like, okay, we should try to do something about this. And finally, we were able to because we put the show on at the Troubadour right. and made the deal to where we were in charge of the show. Like, we're the right. promoters. Right. And uh, it's definitely a little bit different. It's unorthodox when it comes to the normal music business. But right. yeah, yeah. 
I think that's just it's allowed us to control a lot more um, and that control always results in hopefully a better experience for the fans. people coming to the show yeah fans absolutely. you know and, yeah. and uh, I'm just happy that it all worked out and we got a bunch of tickets back into those yeah 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 back into the absolutely. pool absolutely yeah. yeah it's been great so uh, we appreciate everybody that bought tickets for the shows and we're sorry if you couldn't make it or sorry couldn't get tickets we will be back uh, September 17th we're doing a festival in Orange County September 17th so uh, stay tuned for that uh, mxpeaks.com for any details any shows announced if you guys are in the Midwest 350 Brew Fest coming up in uh, August at the end of August yeah. 27th that's gonna be awesome Tom all the beer you can drink I'm actually, MXPX. I'm actually putting that one in September on my phone right now. There you go. Put that in your phone. What's the other one, the beer one? Uh, August 27th. August 27th. Cool. Yep. Shy town In South Chicago. It's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a few other things, but those are the two. Oh, uh, October 1st, Remember yeah. the Punks in San Antonio. It's right. going to be so fun. The I know. Exploited. I looked at, looked at the sex and violence. Every time I say yeah. the exploited, I think of sex and violence. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's going to be insane. The lineup for that show is just, yeah, <laughs> it leaves me speechless. Yeah, another thing we've been doing is like for these shows, and we started it in in Seattle for the Melancholin show, doing live clips on Facebook, Facebook Live. Okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so you see like somebody filming with you, like with a cell phone that's like going out to the internet. <laughs> it's you know what's crazy. funny? So uh, last Thursday for the uh, show in Seattle, I'm working nights right now, so I took I took leave that night, and you know the guys, my crew that are working for me right now. We're all at work, and I swear I told them that I was uh, going to play a show, but they don't remember it. So next day I come in, they're like, hey, man, what did you do last night? I'm like, you know what I did. They're like, well, you didn't tell us. I'm like, yeah, I did. They're like, so it's funny. We were sitting here. We didn't have a lot to do, so one of us went on Facebook and saw saw a thing pop up on Facebook for your show, so we watched the live stream of your show. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So Dude. I told them, well, we're probably live streaming these ones this weekend or this week, right? So they're all at work right yeah. now, and uh, I told them if they had some downtime, they should watch it. That's why last night when... Mike said something about uh, streaming, and I, I said, uh, hey, guys, get back to work. I, it hope is, they, I hope they saw it. It's pretty funny, because in the history of the shipyard, which is like 125 years, how many uh, people worked for a rock star? <laughs> <laughs> people, people call me that all the time. They call me rock star at work all the time. Like, it's like my nickname. It's weird. Rock star and whiz. I think there needs to be a plaque, really. First rock star supervisor. Yeah. The history of the naval shipyard. No, thanks. <laughs> all right, all right. It's well, got to be uh, weird. You can't you can't lie. I mean, I guess you can, to, but everything we do is pretty public. It's yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. I mean, people. I mean, sick. everyone everyone who I work with and work for at the yard knows I'm in the band and all that. And like, if I were to lie and say that I was sick, and then like something popped up on Facebook that I was like in the, like California playing a show, they'd be like, "Hey, man, you feeling all right? Because <laughs> I see you're playing a show." I got Hashtag better. sick. Yeah. Got better. Yeah, I want to know. Like you were just talking about, like people at work literally have have texted your boss or a boss, their boss. Hashtag sick. Yep. And that's it. <laughs> yes. Like I, it write, was a joke. Write me on but Twitter. But he did it for real. Write me on Twitter, uh, Mike Herrera TD. Let me know if the craziest ways you guys have called in sick. But texting hashtag sick is the it's, best. It's so good. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Actually, a friend of mine at work, we. Uh, we always say hashtag whatever to each other, like just in general, like, hey man, I need you to go to the buddy, like, hashtag chill, man. Yeah. Hashtag chill. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and now the pre recorded messages for companies, when you have to press the pound sign, also say, or the hashtag symbol. That's right, because <laughs> nobody knows what a pound sign is anymore. Yeah. Huh? Pound. Pound it. Cool. What's up, Jake? What's up? <laughs> uh, well, so we've been down here now for a couple of days. Um, when you come down to L.A. and we've got a couple of days like we have, what do you guys like to do? Oh, uh, I had a great time this morning nursing a hangover. It was awesome. <laughs> I, uh, I, get a, I used to never get a hangover. I could drink everything, just like one of everything and never get a hangover. It was rare I never got a hangover. Like Mike broke up with a girlfriend one time and we went out to like, you know, just go out and like you know have fun and you know get his mind off it one time and I for some reason decided to have one of everything and I got absolutely hungover. But other than that, like if I would just drink a bunch of whiskey or beer or something, I never used to get hungover. Now like if I smell whiskey, I get hangover. It sucks. 
So I spent the day uh, eating a burrito and drinking water and taking ibuprofen and sleeping. <laughs> you should have come to the juice bar that, that we've been going to the last couple of days. So, yeah, you guys gave me that uh, that shot of it. It was tasty stuff. It was, it was very tart. But it was good. It's yeah. very fresh, you know. It it's good. very L.A. Yeah. Oh, very, very. <laughs> very L.A. Like, I'm surprised we weren't in an oxygen bar drinking it. Well, we had chlor. What, what was it, Mike? Chloroform? Chlor- chlorophyll? Chlorophyll. <laughs> chlorophyll. Chloroform <laughs> might have been an entirely different thing. Uh, we, <laughs> we had chlorophyll in our water, which was quite an interesting presentation. But uh, we were discussing it as we were eating and trying to figure out the relevance of why it was on our water. And maybe it was to, to oxygenate our blood more. We could thought. be. Could Mike, be. Mike's a botanist. You're an if organic. You didn't know. M- <laughs> Mike, Mike took organic. botany in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yuri, so you've been, what have you been up to? Oh, no, my, di- I, I also woke up when the room was still spinning. So, like, <laughs> that's Keep it in mind, happened. guys, that it's only Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I yeah. Like, I feel like Friday night show is going to be the kind of chill one where no one gets really drunk. And then Saturday night is going to be the blowout. I think you're right. Absolutely. I think yeah. You're right too. I, I, I just hang out with friends and just try to, you know, I haven't been to LA in a while and it's, so funny just going to a coffee shop the way people talk to you about coffee you know they explain all of the notes and different flavors and it's going to hit you with the sort of a bark flavor at the end and with some acidity on top you know and i'm just like wow i'm from seattle and <laughs> it's just like i want that okay cool here it is. they still don't even explain <laughs> yeah. it to us like that up yeah, there cool i just want a cup of coffee yeah <laughs> it's crazy not a history lesson of the bean and the growers you know right I had to go to get some coffee this morning, but mostly because I needed to get decent Wi-Fi. There you go. <laughs> because I've been having issues with that while I've been down here. Yeah. So, you know. Putting, some, putting a cramp in your style, right? It's been putting a little cramp in my uploading style, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, doors have opened now, and we can kind of hear the crowd down below. We're upstairs in the venue. Uh, but tonight, night two, is yeah. an entire different set of records. Yeah, yeah. So... What do you guys expect for tonight's show? This this kind of a, uh, I feel like the kind of uh, the more popular records of ours were Life in General, Buffalo, and Passing Moment. That kind of era right there. And tonight we're playing two of them, so we're gonna throw in some stuff that uh, that is you know a little off the beaten path, like you said, that you know we don't normally do. But uh, I think it'll be pretty good. I think people will be pretty amped on it. Yeah, absolutely. It is a ton of fun to go through your history and you have those memories from when you were first playing those songs to audiences and just the reactions and still same reaction i mean it's interesting because at this point now the band's been around for 25 years almost 25 years 20 25 is next year so you got three decades essentially over the course of three decades worth of people who have come into fandom yeah with your band right so every night has a different kind of relevance to the people and 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 maybe it to a certain group of people that are that are coming to each show, but uh, like you mentioned, the, probably the most, the, the the peak, the pinnacle, if you will, is a lot of what's going to happen tonight. Right. So absolutely, it should be fun. Yeah. And you you got people that were there last night that are going to be here tonight that yeah. are, are going to be here tomorrow, and so they've already got a little bit of a taste of you know what the first set of shows was like. But I imagine that this evening is going to be going to be really fun. Absolutely. It's a, it's a 500 capacity venue here in L.A. and. Uh, you know, it gets packed out. It's yeah. It's a it's an interesting layout in the room. So you got people that can be upstairs in a balcony looking down, and then you've got the room, the showroom itself, which is pretty tight. And there was a pretty consistent, you know, pit going on last night. Uh, you know, just looking out into the crowd, people were pretty stoked. Uh, so yeah, I I've noticed throughout the years that the size of the room really affects the energy and of the show and stuff. And this is a good good size you know it's it's pretty tight uh, it's intimate and that's this is like my favorite size room really so and this is also the, true rivals <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah the, i think Sign true in. rivals is about to start so we should just wrap it up um this yeah. episode's gonna be uh with us and it'll have a little section with mill and colin as well oh, cool. from last week nice so uh, i got to talk to them a little bit before they were literally about to go on. actually i was about to go on i was like an, a minute late for my set or something but <laughs> you know you just got to squeeze it in yeah absolutely. all right thank you guys so much uh hey thanks to all the fans thanks for listening yeah absolutely thank you guys yeah thank you
That's Tom Wisniewski, Yuri Ruli, my buddy Jake, and me, Mike. We'll see you guys later. All right. I have to be so bad. All right. So thank you guys again for listening. The My Career Hour, always here for you every Friday. Keep checking back. Blue Apron, thank you. Make sure you guys check that out. Use Mike H. So blueapron.com slash Mike H. And see you next week. <laughs> hey, what's up? MXPX. Uh, go to MXPX.com for the links. But we have new merch. We have shows coming up at the end of the summer. 350 Brew Fest. I am looking forward to downing some Poconacha IPA, Left Coast style brew. It's so weird. It's like so like commercialized, but that's that's the new world we live in where everything's boutique, everything's a small business, uh, everyone's an entrepreneur. But uh, I think it's kind of cool because now we can ignore the big companies. We don't need Walmart. We don't need McDonald's. We got the Blue Aprons. We got. Uh, we got the small bands, like, you know, people doing the DIY ethic for themselves, working for themselves. Like, there's artists and photographers and musicians, and, and it goes beyond that into programmers and designers and uh, marketing geniuses, business digital marketers. Like, uh, it's, it's a cool world that we live in, you know, but you just have to kind of take control of, of what you want to do, you know, and, and maybe that's work a job for a little bit uh and then when you get off work spend all the rest of that time working on your side business and then when you make enough money doing that then you quit your other job i mean that's what everybody i know does that's what i do you know like i i don't have one job i have a bunch of jobs and and you know you just okay a little bit of money here a little bit of here oh if you want me to sing a song sure i'll record a song for you here here's a you know 500 bucks it's like that's how we make our money, just doing whatever we love to do, but finding the, finding who loves what we do. So find out what you love and then find out who loves it. And there you go. You have a business and uh, it's a wonderful world. I appreciate you guys in so many ways, more than you know, more than I say. Um, but I'm out there on the socials, Mike Herrera TD on Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Facebook's just Mike Herrera, I think. So twitter of course please hit me up on twitter however you however you like that's how you can hit me up go to my my website um that's got the best stuff i mean it's not social media but it's my website so you can always find out all the information contact info right there mikeherrera.net all right that's it